comes to the first Sunday in the month of December in 2020. This is the very last month in the year 2020. 2020 has been a big blessing to this family, the Rema Grace Ecclesia, to my own family. We have made strides this year alone. And that confirms the scripture that says, when men are cast down, mm -hmm. you will say there is a lifting. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, a child of God, you should understand the fact that the direction, the outcome, the status of your life, your livelihood is not tied to the country where oh. you belong. It's not tied to the economy you belong mm -hmm. physically. Why? Because the Bible told us in Colossians 1, 12, that God had delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So that means we have our own constitution. Mm -hmm. We have our own economic experts. Mm -hmm. Thank God the economic expert we have is not like the one we find in Africa, particularly in Nigeria, where they keep flip-flopping. Or health expert like in the United States, Dr. Anthony Fauci, that keep flip-flopping. We do not have rookies in the kingdom where we belong, the kingdom of God's dear son. Everything operates in perfection so it is time you understand like the israelite in egypt in goshen goshen was not a spectacular part in egypt because it is where the shepherd shepherd stayed according the, the egyptians consider shepherd shepherds as abomination to them so you can imagine what goshen really look like goshen is not the sophisticated part in egypt it is what you will call the neglected the abandoned part for those uh dwellers that they forbid the shepherds so that's goshen but as soon as a breed of persons walked into goshen the status and outlook of goshen changed many persons this year was a very bad year for them because of the covid 19 but this year we show out with wings like eagles mm. in terms of spiritual insight revelation in terms of acquisition getting things done moving your life from one spot to the other and as we are wrapping the year we are having explosion in finances, preparing us for the year 2021. We didn't ask God for this. No, we didn't ask for it. There are those set of persons who need to ask before they receive. But there is a set of persons who say, before you call, I will answer. Mm -hmm. And while you are still speaking, I will be performing. The covenant we operate, which is what we have been looking at for, for some months now. The covenant we operate, it's not the covenant that tells you, you ask God, then he gives to you. It's a covenant that God gave before you ask. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what I'm saying, don't get confused with what Jesus was teaching. Say, ask and it shall be given. Look at the congregation. Look at his audience. That's what I keep saying. The most dicey portion of the Bible is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because there, many people do not understand how to distinguish between when the Old Testament ended and when the New Testament started. Erroneously, we think that the birth of Jesus Christ 
eradicated the New Testament. No, that's not true. That's not true. It was an interlude. It was an intermediary. The New Testament only took effect after the resurrection of Jesus. So that gives you a clue. Sometimes he speaks prophetically to preparing the disciples especially about what they are where they are going to. But Jesus was very careful with the congregation, the crowd, not to stretch them so they don't get confused. For example, John's Gospel 10, he only introduced something. Mm -hmm. He called himself the Son of God and he picked up stones to stone him. <laughs> so imagine if he had gone into the depth of the revelation. He said before Abraham was, I am. They picked up stone again to stone him. Are you getting what the apostle is saying this morning? So it takes a lot of spiritual insight to be able to dissect and help people understand that the New Testament didn't start from Matthew 1. Neither did it start from Mark 1 or John 1. Please don't get confused about it. The actual birth of the church didn't take place before Jesus went to the cross. The church was better on the day of Pentecost. That's after his resurrection. That was why if you, if you read the account of, uh, of Luke, Jesus said, go and wait for the tarry for the promise of the Father. Go and wait in Jerusalem. Until ye be endured. You see, it was a period where they were not to go out. There was a point Jesus instructed that don't go out now. Why? Because physically he wasn't there with them. He had ascended. But the one to replace him had not come. So guess what? There was a vacuum. And so that vacuum was about 40 days. About 40 days. From the time of his actual crucifixion i think about on the 50th day that's what pentecost means is 50th meanwhile pentecost was a feast observed in the old testament it's, it was called the feast of harvest it was the feast of harvest on the 50th but the harvest that day was no longer the harvest of food crops mm -hmm. material is it was a harvest of souls so you see when jesus told peter when he told john when he told james follow me and i will make you to become fishers of men the harvest kicked off officially on the day of pentecost in the upper room act of the apostles chapter two see these little things matters a lot. Mm -hmm. It helps you put into perspective where you are. You don't get confused. So when you look at some of the teachings of Jesus, you don't get confused anymore. Otherwise, there would have been no need for the Holy Spirit to speak so much on marriage and relationship after the teachings of Jesus on marriage and relationship in 1 Corinthians 7, in Ephesians chapter 5. There would have been no need if Jesus has given the latest update. That's why after 1 Corinthians, Ephesians, and any other part that the Bible spoke about, 1 Corinthians 11, there is no new teaching on these subject matters anymore. Because the epistles are the eternal present teaching. Are you getting what I'm saying? How dare will you upgrade Jesus' teaching? No, it wasn't an upgrade. Jesus was teaching in the old covenant with a flavor of better understanding. Why? How? What's the apostle saying? Moses spoke based on what he knew. Isaiah spoke based on what he knew. Jeremiah spoke based on what he knew. But when Jesus was speaking, he was speaking based on himself. They all spoke about him. So how do you think the presentation will be like? The guy presenting a book you wrote and you presenting the book you wrote. 
The presentation can never be the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? The guy who's presenting your book, we first need to understand, try to get into your mind. Not just the letters he is reading. He is reading. He needs to see what was going on in your mind, why you wrote those things you wrote. But when the author is presenting, he doesn't have those stress. In fact, he can expand on his own thoughts on the spot. While the other guy presenting it will be very cautious not to go and interpret something out of context so the author doesn't come and shut him down and his reputation will be at stake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when Jesus stood, he handled these things differently. Jesus' period before the cross was transitioned was transitory. It was a transition period. That's where at the point he started. You have heard it was said in the law, you shall not do this. But very, very, I say unto you. You see, he was preparing them for the New Testament. So that's why I said Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they can be very, very confusing if you don't understand who he was addressing, under what covenant was he standing. Do you understand? That's exactly what we are talking about. Last week, we started a brief series, like I said, the Father's Password. We took the past one last week. Today, we want to look at the part two. Now, you see, part of the things I, 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 I mentioned something last week. I said I was going to give us the Greek word for the word please. So that you understand, I was saying that last week, that listen, the pleasing there is not God expecting you to do something to make him happy. Because the Bible said we are already accepted in the beloved. We are already accepted. We are his beloved now that we are in Christ Jesus. But I said that the word please actually talk about receiving. That's what I said that last week. Now, can you remember Amos 3.3 that we quoted last week? You know, can two work together except they be in agreement? Now, the Greek word that translated is somebody fully agree, agreeable. That means you took an action that is fully agreeable. Fully agreeable to what? Fully agreeable to the principle, to the standard that the Father has set. So therefore, once you meet those standards, you receive. That's why I said the pleasing there was not necessary to make the father happy. No, it was you receiving. You cannot receive from him until you fully agree with the principle for receiving. So don't look at please from, oh, oh, I need to impress him. No, 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 no. He's done past that. You are his beloved. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Do you know when many of us, even though we are Christians, we are born again, we are genuinely born again, but we are so ignorant. We have this mentality of not meeting God's standard and we are looking forward. We are working so hard to try and become acceptable in him. Well, I have good news and bad news for you. If you are not acceptable to him, it means you are not in Christ Jesus. It means you are not part of this kingdom of God's dear son that we talked about in Colossians 1, 12 and 13. But the good news there is that if you are in Christ Jesus and you are born again, it means you have been accepted in his beloved. You have become the object of his love. Did you not understand that the Bible says he commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So imagine how much more the impact of that love now that we have accepted his love. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Father's password. We are looking at part two today. That last week we gave the definition of a password as a secret word or phrase that must be used to gain admission to a place. And then we dealt so much. We looked at the why password. And we said, part of the things we said is the fact that when you have access to that place, that particular location, it shows that you have a relationship with the person that owns that document. And I, re I, I recall we use our smartphone, our Android phone, to give that illustration that virtually every smartphone possesses some kind of a password, some form of lock. And therefore, somebody to have access to it, the person need to have a kind of relationship with you. You have to authorize the person. 
We said one of the whys is to prevent unauthorized access to that place. And we said God, the Father, is smarter. He has his own mechanism in, in place. And then during that part one, we, we went down and then we now discovered that God's password was what? It was faith. God's secret password was faith. That's where the issue of that Hebrews 11, 6. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I said I was going to give us the Greek word. There are two Greek words used. One was built from another root Greek word. It is called Eurystos. Eurystos. You know, we have to practice pronouncing these things. Uh, Eurystos. Eurystos. That's the Greek word. It means to be well pleased with a thing. Now, take note of the word. It's not with a person. To be, that's why I said it was receiving. Is well pleased with the thing. That means you did it well. You press the right button and so the door open. Are you getting what I'm saying? You were given the right password. You entered the right word or the right phrase and it opened unto you. So it's to be well pleased with a thing. To fully agree. Fully agreeable. That means there is a blockade here. The password. I created it. I gave it to you. If you enter the correct password that I gave you, guess what? Open sesame, the door opens unto you. And whatever you need is yours. It is at your disposal. So, between the believer and the resources in God's kingdom is the password. Every time you enter the password, you go in. I remember we used OTP last week. One-time password. In the backend industry. We had that password the actual figures keep changing but is the password and i said faith is like that and then i said today practically we will go into the application of this faith how it looks like otp otp comes with time they can just tell you it is in in 60 seconds one minute it would have expired if you don't enter it on time it will just go off like that when you press Again, another one will be given unto you. Then we said something like, for example, though faith is the password, the faith that is applicable for healing is definitely different from the faith that is applicable for prosperity. Mm -hmm. So just like the OTP, it keeps, it keeps changing, but it's the same OTP, but the figures are never the same for two transactions. No two different transactions have the same OTP figures. So that's what faith is like. That was the point we raised that last week. For you to understand that. And then I did warn us. I said, you cannot say a message was preached to you and you had such a great faith so much. And then you think now you have so much big faith. And then you do not go and carry out what makes your action fully agreeable with that which the Father has set in place according to the Greek word for please that I say it is a uh, Eurastos. So you will not have access to what you are seeking. Yeah, you won't have that access to it. And then we understood that last week. I'm trying to recap because today basically is application. Is the application like I promised us. How do we now apply this faith? Now, in Hebrews 11, 1, we saw that the Bible says now faith is a substance. And that faith, the word substance in the Greek actually means the real thing, the actual thing. And I told us that what your eyes see, how you feel, what you smell, what you taste is not as real as what God's word says. I hope we can remember that. That when the Bible says faith is a substance, it means it is the real deal. So we need to understand faith from the scriptural perspective. And the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, there's something that is very instructive there in that Romans chapter 10. Last week we read it from verse 11 to 17. But today I just want to stop from I want to stop in verse 13. 
because of the point I want to bring. See, with God, the Bible says there is no schism. Yeah, there's no schism. There's no schism. There's no schism. He said, for the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Did you see that? That's God's word. Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. He didn't say, he didn't categorize it. He just said, whosoever. If you believe in him, the end product is that you shall not be ashamed. Can you believe him? Do you believe that? Now this is it. Today I want to walk us into practical application of the faith. I, I also remember last week I told us that I will show us the faith combo today, right? Yeah, the faith combo pack. And I said com combo, combo actually means you putting everything you need in one place. So once you have that, you go with it. So faith is actually our own combo pack. Praise God. Hallelujah. Faith is our combo pack. And faith is God's secret. Uh, uh, is God's uh, Password is the father's password. You know, I, I explained to all the reason why I chose the father's password instead of God's password because it depicts relationship. Yeah, it's God to every creature, every creature, but he is father to some of us. Those of us who are now members of his royal cosmic family. So he said, for this, for the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, it doesn't matter what you are going through, or it doesn't matter what you are facing, it doesn't matter what you are experiencing, it doesn't matter what you are believing God for. God's word cannot be altered. God's word alters every other word, every other thought, every other action, every other situation. It says you will not be ashamed. That means if I apply the principles that I'm going to teach us now, then it means I will get the end result. Now, you see, God's word is one book, that library. It's actually a library, library of 66 different books. God's word is that library that you can look at every situation that is yet to happen to you and you know what the outcome will look like. Not, not just that you know what the outcome will look like, you know what to do to get that outcome. Praise God. Amen. So let me tell you, for those of us that are so crazy about expo, about cheating, God's word is our expo to success. God's word is our expo to divine health. God's word is our expo to prosperity, to protection. Because when you, as you read God's word, it does not leave you in dark as per, in the dark as per where you are going to, what the result is going to look like. For example, let me take this Romans 10 Verse 11 again. Let's take it again. Look at it. For the scripture said. Who said it? It's the scripture who said so. And don't forget the Bible says the scripture cannot be broken. God is not the man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. He said for the scripture said. So it's not Apostle Blessing who said it. This is what the scripture has said. Except you now have problems so much that you believe God is a liar. He's a man that he will lie. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen. I'm demonstrating how to activate faith. How many times have I read this same scripture? It is deliberate. The more I read it, the more it takes hold in my spirit. That is why when we read last week, the Bible didn't say faith comes by hearing the word of God. No, that's not what the scripture says. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing. The Bible didn't say faith comes when you hear the word of God. No, it said faith comes by hearing and hearing. So you can't hear once and think you now have faith. Why? God is smart enough not to create a system that we can beat. Particularly in Africa, particularly with Nigeria. Just give them the system, they will beat the system. Why people are planning to create system, most of us are planning how to break the system. So that means... You cannot move forward until somebody develops something. That's why several African nations are backward. How many of us are producing nations in Africa? The so-called giant of Africa, Nigeria, is about the most backward country in the entire globe. Tell me what we produce. 
But when they bring it, we, we, we can break it and they crack the system. And then we feel hippie about it. No, you are stranded. Because until the guy develops something, you have nothing to act with, to act on. So you can be rendered useless and completely redundant. Praise God this morning. Hallelujah. So look at it. How many times have we read it? Let's read it again. Romans 10 verse 11. For the scripture said, please, it, this, this wasn't Paul talking. This, this is not the apostle blessing talking this morning. For the scripture said, do you have a problem with what the scripture says? Are you seeing it? I, I, when you say scripture, can you remember? Let me give you one, one scripture that will help juggle our mind. In the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16 or 1 Timothy 3.16. That was it. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And in book, and in book of 1 Peter, the Bible says men were moved in the old time. The spirit came upon them and that there no scripture is of any private interpretation. Are you getting it? So when he's saying the scripture says, or the scripture said according to old in, uh, King James uh, English, when he said the scripture says, he's saying this is what God himself has approved. This is a practical service this morning. I am practically teaching you what I do to have the kind of faith I have. You chew it over and over again. Do you know as I'm reading that one verse, the more I read it, the more it gets hold in my spirit. For the scripture said, that's why I said it's a practical class. For the scripture said, whosoever, look at it, listen to me. He says whosoever. Why are you trying to take yourself out from the whosoever? Oh, you are smarter than God. Because when we read this, some preacher who thinks he knows what he's doing will now start trying to create doubt, distinction into the whosoever. Hello, do you know more than the Holy Spirit now? He didn't bring any distinction. He said whosoever. Stop creating sin consciousness in the people that takes them out of the whosoever. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen, it's time you stop listening to your pastors if they are not saying what the scripture is saying. Because at the end of the day, you'll be stuck where you are and you'll be frustrated in life. For the scripture, who is your pastor to speak and contradict when the scripture has spoken? Don't forget, all scripture is given by who? The inspiration of God. It is called Numa. Numa in the Greek. In the Hebrew, it is Ruach. You know what Ruach means? Ruach and Numa, they are the same thing. It means spirit breathed. It means spirit breathed. Air. That's where the, that sickness, pneumonia, comes from. It's air. It's Numa. All, script, all scripture is spirit breathed. That's how the Greek renders it. That Timothy 3.16. All scripture is spirit breathed. It's spirit breathed. So if the... Except you tell me that God made mistake. That you, tiny you, you are not smarter than God to correct him. I see some pastors getting into a problem. They think they are being smart, but they are creating problems for themselves, their ministry, and the, and the congregation under them. And this is a serious warning. If you have common sense, don't bring it to the Bible. The Bible operates with a faith sense, mm -hmm. not common sense. If you think you are too smart, don't bring it to the Bible. Because the Bible does not operate at a smart level. The Bible operates at the supernatural level. So your smart level becomes nothing because it's only functional in this natural realm. This is a warning this morning. Let's know when to stop. Who are you to, to keep correcting God? And some pastors and some denominations don't even know that now they are not playing senior partner to the Holy Spirit. 
And well, and that's not what he really meant. Well, that's not what that place really said. I, I recall in this church, I gave us a scripture where God shut them down. That's Hebrews 4. Using the, I think the amplified version of the message. He said God meant what he said. If he didn't mean it, he wouldn't have said it. You are too small, too in insignificant to correct our Father God. He said, for the scripture, how many times? You've lost count. Me too. For the scripture said, listen to me, people of God. This is how to build faith. God had dead unto every one of us the measure of faith. That is the word. That's the word. Your nature is a faith nature. So it can easily connect with faith coming out from God's word. It's not a, it's not a mystery anymore. It's not a revelation. I've told you now that, that faith is a combo pack. And let me tell you what that entails. When you understand the intricacies of faith. I will come back to this scripture. I'm practically teaching us something. Because you see. You know what happens to us. Why our spiritual status. Our spiritual height. Remains in the level of dwarfism. We will clap all the hands we want to clap in the morning. This is our devotional. This is the regular Christian family devotion. We will do all the clapping, do all the shouting, plus disturbing our neighbor. And then pray all the prayers we need to pray. And bind and finish everybody. Then finally, we ask somebody to read scripture. And they read three verses. And then we say in Jesus' name, Amen. We have gone we are true with our devotion with him. It's a big mistake. Because as we progress, I will show you why that is a big mistake. Prayer is a reaction or response to your interaction with God. Prayers should be your reaction or response to your interaction with God. Your interaction with God can be a monologue, like reading the Bible, listening to the Bible. It's not all the time it will be a dialogue where he's speaking and you are speaking. No, it could be most times it's going to be a monologue. You shut your mouth, open your ears, and you hear him speak. Then based on the word he has given to you for that day, you now know how to speak to him based on the word. You know our problem. We keep doing this routine and Jesus warns us against it. We want to say the same thing we said yesterday today. We want to say the same thing we said day, day before yesterday today. That's why you have the word. That's why you have God's word, the Bible. And the, the reason why our faith life is so weak is because we keep giving portions of scripture that excite us as our daily reading scriptures for our family. That means you are not growing. You are the head of the family. You are not growing. Because you keep giving what you think you know. If every time you go to church and the pastor preach and teach. A subject you already knew before. And you don't see it from a different perspective. Nothing was added to you spiritually that day. Spiritual growth comes from not hearing an entirely new thing, but hearing what you have heard before in a new way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hearing what you have heard before in a new way. After all, we don't have another Bible. It's the same Bible. And there is no boring. Though to some persons, I learned even to Pope, uh, Pope Francis, the Bible is already boring. I, I don't know how true it is. That he said certain portions of the Bible are completely outdated and should be removed. And then they said they want to create their own Bible. They call it Biblica. So that the Pope endorses it. Like I said, I have not gotten any official uh, uh, statement on it because I didn't research. I just saw it somewhere. So it tells you that people don't even understand what the scripture is. If you ever become bored listening to your pastor or you reading the bible something is wrong with you 
Scripture says the messes of God are new every morning. For example, it's automatic. I shared that revelation with my wife some time ago. Lamentations 5, 25. His mercies are new every morning. He didn't say if you cry. If you ask for, for and that's why we have problems. We do esogesis instead of exegesis. Exegesis is drawing out from God's word. Esogesis is putting something into God's word. And that's adulteration. You are contaminating it. It says it's mercies. For those of us who are so sin conscious, the first thing you do in the morning is to ask God for mercy and ask him for forgiveness. You are dead wrong. So dead wrong. Way back in the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah picked the message of the Holy Spirit. He said his messages are new every morning. That means once it is 7, once it is 12, 01, it's an automatic newness of mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is unmerited love. That's unmerited love. So if he says his messages are new, Every morning, he didn't say if you pray, if you ask for forgiveness, if you confess your sins. Why are we so daft? Once you hit the morning, 1201, his mercy is fresh for you that day. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. That means whether by your act, by your actions, you looking at yourself. We all look at ourselves and say, we don't deserve this kind of love. That's the mercy of God. But we have turned mercy into a weapon of guilt and a weapon of con condemnation. His mercies are new every morning, people of God. Listen to that. In the morning you wake up, it's a fresh mercy. Like nothing happened yesterday. You are not deepening your relationship with the Father when all you bring to Him is what He has taken care of more than 2,000 years ago, the sin issue. Develop a relationship with him, please. If you have somebody, all the person does is complain about how life is bad that I'm terrible and miserable, a time will come you start avoiding the person. Don't let the Almighty avoid you because that's going to be catastrophic. Praise God this morning. The Father's Password, part two. For the scripture said, Faith Combo, Pack. What does he entail? The revelation of God's will on the subject matter to you. It exposes it to you. When you understand this faith, the combo pack, this is it, all in one. The revelation of God's will on the subject matter. Did you see that? So when we wake up in the morning in our various homes, and after we have danced, we have, we have, we have, we have shouted, disturbed our neighbors, and then we pray. Then finally we read the scripture and say amen. Wow, that's upside down. Because what faith does is to beam the revelation of God's will on the subject matter. You've already prayed on the subject matter without having insight into God's will. And then you got up and you said amen and you are going, my goodness, that's turning the whole thing upside down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because faith sheds the revelation of God's will. And how does faith come? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and what? And hearing. So our devotion, the major emphasis of our devotion with God is the hearing of his word. It's the hearing and hearing of his word. You think it is your prayers that is making him move mountains? Really? Oh, you think it's because you are clapping your hands? There's no formula. It is his word. Jesus walked the face of this earth as our own example. I can't recall how many times he was clapping his hands and jumping. But every time they come close to him, he opens his mouth and gives the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two, the faith combo pack. The impact is that it equips you with understanding. Do you see that? The moment the will of God is revealed through faith that comes through hearing and hearing. Guess what? Your understanding. You have understanding, better understanding 
on the subject matter. Number three, it builds belief and conviction in you. It builds belief and conviction in you. Conviction is, is like a guilty verdict. A guilty feeling. And that's what it really is. Conviction is a guilty feeling. There is a positive one anyway that I told you that you need to be guilty. God needs to see that you are guilty of faith for him to say, release it. Praise God. Hallelujah. He needs to see it in you. You need to see it in your spirit, man. Not, in, not by what you say only. You must first see it in your spirit, but not in your head. So it builds belief and conviction. This is the faith combo pack. And then it gives you access to effective and efficient communication with the Father God. Can you see what faith does? So this is the basis for which the Greek word translated please means fully agreeable. Now that you and, you and, you and God are on the same page, you cannot have what you ask for. Praise God. Hallelujah. You must be on the same page, fully agreeable, according to Amos 3.3. 3. You must be on the same page with the Father for you to receive what you ask for. You must have his password to that goodies you are looking for. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't you see that faith takes care of prayers? Because it tells you how to not talk to him. I will give you a practical example as we go along. And you will see the difference in the two prayers. We open our, our mouth to pray our ignorance. Instead of praying our understanding. And that understanding is not going to come if we keep boycotting God's word. Have you seen Christians wake up in the morning? They just start blasting everybody with prayers. And as in many cases, they will finish and say amen and go back to sleep. They will never open the scripture. And you ask yourself, who did you just talk to? No, you just spoke to yourself. Praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him. Don't forget, the encounter in Matthew's gospel, so much I just pouring in. In Matthew's gospel 17, the Mount of Transfiguration experience. That is one portion of the Bible that burned into my spirit forever. Of all the manifestations that showed up, of all the voice, the majestic voice that was heard physically, audibly, by the three disciples, the appearance of Moses, the appearance of Elijah, and all the wondrous things happening. What did Peter say? Let Bill Tabadako and just remain here. But what did the father say? This is my beloved son. He, listen carefully to what I'm going to. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen to him. In other words, Peter, are you not? You shouldn't be talking. You should be listening. Praise God. Hallelujah. We talk too much. That's why we keep having problems. We keep missing it. We should be listening, not talking. You talk less and listen more. And your faith life will boom. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are too much in a hurry for God to hear us. Instead of us allowing ourselves to hear him. Of all that happened, the takeaway for the father was, listen to my son. Is the church listening to Jesus today? Or we are amusing ourselves, creating formula where none exist. Because now we have told people, if you want to get God to do that thing, just go and dance. Just sing praises. Dance, 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 dance. You force God to come. You lie. God does not break his principle. Hebrews 11, 6 didn't say, for without praise, it is impossible to please God. No, he said without faith. Because even in your giving praise, it has to be faith audited. It has to be faith aligned. Otherwise, you aren't getting what you are looking for. Praise God. You can dance all you want till you faint from exhaustion. You aren't getting nothing. It didn't say faith. 
faith comes by praising God. No, 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 no. Without faith, not without praise, it's impossible to please God. You can't receive from Him. So faith is the main thing. It's the real deal. And the Bible says faith is reality. Not the, fan, not the word of fantasy we are creating among ourselves. Can't you see how we are diverging from what we are supposed to be doing? Instead of listening to him that like the father spoke so loudly in Matthew's Gospel 17 during the Mount of Transfiguration. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Shut your mouth and listen to him. Peter was talking. Rabble rousing. Jibo jabbering. Oh, Peter wanted to say what was in his mind. The father said, shut up. I can read your thoughts afar off. That's what Sam said. He said, God knows my thoughts afar off. The question is, do you know his? Praise God. Hallelujah. You are the one who needs him. He doesn't need you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You need him. He doesn't need you. He knows all about you. You know nothing about him until you have a conversation with him. And how do you converse with God? Through his word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? Because we need to drive this home. There, there's no shortcut. There's no substitute to developing a healthy Christian life when you are boycotting God's word. That's the only connection. Because that's where faith comes from. And he says without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can receive. Even though the entire world has been given unto you, every good thing that pertains to life and godliness, you need the key to unlock it. Praise God. Amen. That key is not so easy, please. That key is not prison. That key is faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Do you believe God's word? I can never see shame. Why? Because the scripture said so. Praise God. Hallelujah. I can't see shame. I can't see shame. Because scripture said so. So I need to chew this over and over again. Shame is an unpleasant situation. It can be in terms of productivity, in terms of business, in terms of money, in terms of whatever. I, when I say I can't see shame, it is an all-rounder. Praise God. Hallelujah. For this, I'm glad he didn't say Paul said he said, for the scripture said. And Timothy 3.16 said, that scripture was given by the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Are you seeing what happens when you focus on studying the Bible instead of rushing through in the morning as we are rushing out? It's only when it comes to God's word we don't have time. We have time to release our religious ignorances in the in the name of prayers we have time to exhibit our religious ignorance ignorances in the name of praising and dancing but when it comes to the only thing that we unlock the key for us to assess what we are trying to get through those two those two methods because now we think they are method god is not a methodist praise god Hallelujah. The only thing he said will give you the key that will give you the access to what you are expecting, you are looking for. That's the only one we don't have time for. And let's already just read the psalm. Yes, we, we always run to psalm. <laughs> like I've said, you can't understand psalm until you understand the life of David. The life of Moses. You got to be reading psalm the prayers of king david without reading the book of samuel first samuel second samuel first king second king first chronicle second chronicle you don't even have an idea who david is you can't know david through the psalms you know him through these books that i mentioned but how many of us have that faith sense no we don't you jump to psalm and you are saying let all my enemies die that's not david that's not the man David. David had opportunity to kiss Saul. He didn't. He didn't. 
So don't, don't go and read one line about somebody while you left the lifestyle, the whole life, his package or, or, or of the person. What is Sam? Sam are the various events, incidents that occurred in the life of David at one point or the other. But the books I mentioned to you now, they are his entire story. The full picture of the man David. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the picture from when he was single to when he became an adult and he got married. And how he dealt with those things. Look at verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Did you see that? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Did you see that? He's rich, not stingy. Towards or why did I read that scripture for you to know that God doesn't have two principles? It's the same. It's one for everybody. So that's why the white Christian is not better than a black Christian. An American Christian is not better than an African Christian. Yet we allow these distinctions to even come up, even in the Christian faith. Anyone showing that is ignorant. It's ignorant of the scriptures. The Father's Password, part 2. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at it. First of all, he said, whosoever believeth shall not be ashamed. Then whosoever called shall be saved. The word saved there in Greek is sozo. Sozo means to be delivered, to be healed, to be protected, to be provided for is God's total package. Would you know if you didn't read it? Would you know if you didn't come to church this morning and the apostle didn't explain to you? That's why we go to church. As far as I'm concerned, the primary reason we go to church is not to give offering. You are blessed with, with or without your offering. Because the Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that the blessing has come upon us already because of the finished work of Jesus. However, the primary reason I believe, and I said this some time ago in Rema Grace Ecclesia, the reason we go to church is to listen to God. Is to hear Him. In fulfillment of what happened in Matthew 17, when the Father told Peter, shut your mouth and hear Him. Listen to Him. Listen to him. Every time any of his disciples were in a hurry to talk instead of listening, they made serious blunder. Philip wanted to give his own revelation. He said, ah, eh, okay, if uh, Lazarus has died also, let us go and die with him. Because he, he, he thought he was uh, giving revelation. He thought Jesus was giving revelation. He didn't know that Jesus was speaking the fact that the man was dead. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you see, we should be listening. When we don't listen, we make serious blunders that will come and haunt us. Practical applications. Matthew's Gospel chapter 8. As we begin to wrap up. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, from verse 13 to 17. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. A centurion is a soldier, is an officer with at least a minimum of a hundred soldiers under his command. That's what centurion, century, hundred. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Did you see that? No gymnastic was required. No seed sowing was required for that. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Did you see that? And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother-in-law, his, his wife's mother, lay, that's Peter's mother-in-law, and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Now, until God's word fools you, he can't feed you. Say that today in the world we live in, that somebody is sick of fever. Normally, the first thing we, are, we, we all encourage them is to say, go take anti-malaria drugs. 
Jesus touched her hand and the fever left. Praise God. Hallelujah. If faith is not fooling you yet, then you are not operating it. At some point in time, this faith life will make you look stupid. There's a scripture that keeps, you no, know, that is very apparent. 2 Corinthians 6, it says, as deceivers, but yet true. As deceivers, but yet true. So, for those of us who are looking for accolade, approval from the world, I feel very sorry for you. I feel very sorry for you. Those pastors who want to be politically correct, I feel sorry for you. And he touched her hand and the fever left her. Did you see that? That's power. Praise God. Amen. He touched her hand and the fever left her and ministered unto them. When the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word, not only for it. He cast out the spirit with his word, not seed sowing. He cast out the spirit with his word, not gallon of water. He cast out the spirit with his word. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing the word. As you are reading now, faith is being built inside you. Tomorrow there is fever with somebody. You realize they don't have money for medicine. No problem. Jesus touched and fever left. You touch in the name of Jesus and watch the fever leave. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, my dear. The only role model you should have is Jesus. Because sometimes we falter and then we fickle here and there. We flip flop. But Jesus never flip flops. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is scripture. If I read it, Archbishop Benson Idaosa, the legend himself, he, the first dead he raised was what he read in the Bible when his pastor was preaching and Jesus raised the dead. And he asked his pastor, have you done it? He said, no. But Jesus did it. He said, yes. And Jesus said, I can do it. He said, yes. Although, Idaosa said, he said, hey, if Jesus did it, you have not done it, then it's difficult. Okay, but if Jesus said, I can do it, that means I can do it too. He entered his bicycle, started riding around town, looking for the dead. Is it normal? No, we are not normal. That's why we are called super normal, supernatural. Faith, the act of faith sometimes makes you look weird. Because... It does not apply to sense. Because it's not in the sense realm. It's in the supernatural realm. The fourth dimension. And when the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. You see that? And he cast out the spirit with his word. Not with his blue. And healed all that were sick. That he might be fulfilled. Look at it. So you see. Jesus was living out scriptures. As a believer, you are living out scriptures. So that's why you better read the scripture and know how to live it out. Praise God. Live, live the, read the scripture so you know how to live it out. He was living the scripture. He will act and he will remember the scripture said so. He will do this and he will remember the scripture said so. Mm. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. And the Isaiah, Isaiah never met him. Saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. So now look at the look at the application of faith. Remember when I was giving you the faith combo pack? One of the things I said is that it gives the revelation of God's will on the subject matter to you. And then what? It gives you what understanding. The fourth point we gave there is that it, it equips you, it helps you to develop effective and efficient communication. With God. And that's prayer. Now look at it. You just read this scripture now. Matthew's Gospel 8 verse 17. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. That he himself took our infirmities. And bare our sicknesses. Infirmities is not necessarily disease. Or it could be weakness. Impotency. What you couldn't do. You are limited. By way of physical stuff. 
psychological stuff, infirmity. You, you needed to go to this school. You, your parents can't because there's no more. That's an infirmity. It's not tied to anything just physical. It is anything. Infirmity, a weakness, a lack of strength, an inability to do what you're supposed to do. Then sicknesses and diseases. Bible says he himself took. Now, if you before you read this scripture, when, when you feel sick, when it's like there is a symptom of sickness in you, this is the prayer you are likely going to pray. You are going to say, God should heal you. Right? Mm -hmm. God should heal you of this sickness and heal you of this disease. That's how you are going to pray. But today you have read a scripture that said he himself took your disease and your sickness. How will you now pray? Under the same condition. It's not going to be different. Yeah. Because you find yourself talking more. And you are from a point of. Enragement. You are enraged. The other time. You are uncertain. You hope God will take this away. But then you now discover Jesus said. I have done that already. And you ask yourself. What? So how did you get to my body? In the name of Jesus, get out of this body. Now you see, both your, psych, your psyche, the words that come out of, from your mouth will be different. You are not now expecting God to heal you. You are enforcing the healing that has been provided. And then you now say, Lord, I thank you for opening my eyes to see that you've actually taken it. And don't forget, the Bible says faith is the sometimes the actual thing. So you can look at that cyst in your body. You can look at the, the cancer. You can look at that ailment. You can look at that disease and look them in the eyeball and say you don't exist. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says it is only faith that is the substance. Hallelujah. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So if God's word says it, that is the real deal. Mm -hmm. And that is the only deal. And that is what is real. Not what you feel. Okay. Not how you feel. Not what you see. Not what you smell. Not what you taste. What is real is what God's word says. Mm -hmm. So he himself took. Means you have no business. In fact, you are not here. Praise God. Hallelujah. The conversation can never be the same. The first person is talking to God. The second person is talking to the situation. They're two different things. So you see that if you do not operate by this principle, if you don't get the father's password, you will mess up everything. Mm -hmm. Don't open your mouth to pray without a scripture. I mean, let the scripture, that's what I'm saying, let scripture guide your prayers. Not because somebody wrote it in a book as a prayer point for you in the church. So that's what you'll be praying for the rest of your life. When will you have a personal relationship with this God as a father? Stop being religious. He himself took. They asked Jesus in John's Gospel 6, 28 to 30, how shall we walk the works of God? And he told them to walk the works of God, to experience miracles is to believe. Is to believe on Jesus. Believe in Jesus. He is the word. Now, let me give you another scripture as we wrap up now. In Psalm 84, verse 11 and 12, the Bible tells us that no good will you withhold. From them that walk uprightly. No good thing will he be told. From them that walk uprightly. So when you read Psalm 84. Listen carefully. I said today it is practical. When you read Psalm 84. The Bible said no good thing will he withhold. That is a future tense. Mm -hmm. So you say, Father, we come before you. We thank you because you said you will not withhold any good thing. That means we expect that this thing is going to come. We believe that this thing is going to come. You won't withhold it from us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, flip several uh, hundreds of pages. Let me take you to the update. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So look at it. When you read this, this portion in 2 Peter 1.3, how would you pray under the same circumstance? 
Father, I thank you because this one has been given already. Oh, we have received this already. We are not expecting you to do it for us because you said, you not, it's not that you are... You have not only done it, you have given it to us. Mm -hmm. Your word says it's been given. In Psalm, you look forward, we look forward to you doing it. But in 2 Peter 1, 3, the Bible says you have not only done it, you have handed it over to us. Mm -hmm. So we thank you because we received this good. That good can be a car, it can be a house, it can be a child, it can be an education, it can be a career. Thank you because we receive it. Now look at the prayers. There's a difference between the two. Yeah. Why did these two people pray different prayers? Scriptures. The portion of the Bible they read determined how they both prayed. That's why the most stupid thing you can do is to allow one pastor to be reading prayer points to you from the pulpit. That's the most stupid thing you can allow yourself get involved in. These two scriptures speak of the same thing. But the timing of the scriptures give different perspective completely. One, they look forward to God doing it. You can't read 2 Peter 1, 3 and look forward to God doing it. When he says he has given you. When you read Psalm, you believe God is going to do it. When you read 2 Peter, you can't help but thank him that he has done yes, it. Sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why I said today is practical. So le let me tell you the importance of not toiling with the reading of God's word. Because your effective, how effective or how efficient your prayer life is, is based on the portion of the Bible you are reading or not reading. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So you see, our first response, which is a wrong one, will be, Father, give us. But the right response will be, Father, thank you. In between the first response and the second response is the answer. The difference between the first wrong response and the second, wrong res uh, and the, and second right response is the answer of hearing and hearing the word of God. Why did he say hearing and hearing? Because he knows there is Old Testament and there is New Testament. What's the second hearing? Keep updating yourself in the content of God's word. Praise God. Amen. Don't read one and stop. That's why no matter how much we study, how much we feed, we still keep feeding. Mm -hmm. Because the more we study, the more our eyes are open. Mm -hmm. The more we study, the more we get better understanding. The more fortizo light breaks forth, illumination. The more we have access to epignosis, the precise and the correct knowledge. It is not grammar. It's not about your church denomination. Better help yourself, sister. Better help yourself, brother. If you are going to follow the name of a church, the name of a denomination, you can as well remain crippled in one spot for the rest of your life spiritually. But if it is Jesus who called you that you are really serving, then it doesn't matter the denomination you walked into as long as they are feeding you with the right word. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. Church is not a club. It's not a secret society. Where if you walk in, you can't walk out. If your church denomination is like that, they run away from it. It's it only secret societies. It's a problem if you enter, you can't come out. The church denomination, denomination should not be like that. The father's password. Can you see the difference? I kept reading a scripture over and over. We will not see shame. If you believe, you won't see shame. If you call, you'll be sozoed. If you call, you'll be sozoed. That's what he said. Are you calling? So why don't you believe that you will be sozoed? You will be saved. You will be protected. You will be blessed. You will be prospered. You will be healed. You will be delivered. Why? Keep focusing on it so you get the food faith combo pack. Don't forget we said faith builds belief and conviction. Mm -hmm. Belief and conviction does not come in one day. Mm -hmm. Belief and conviction does not come by one reading. Mm -hmm. That's why I say hearing and hearing. And I've given you the last insight to that hearing and hearing. The second hearing is always an update. Whether it is the same line or not, it's an update in your spirit. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The more you read, it's an update. Guess what? Because it's updating you from hearing 
to believing, from believing becomes conviction. The moment you hit that leg of conviction, it's done. It's a done deal. That's why you can see us celebrating something that no other eyes are seeing because our faith eyes have seen it. Praise God. The Father's Password, Part 2. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we'll bring this sermon to a close. I was looking forward to 30 minutes. I spent one hour, 10 minutes.